This video looks at both the four acceleration and four force vectors as defined in terms of what an observer in some inertial frame observes. It also looks at the effect of a four force on the rest mass of an object. So in special relativity, the equation of motion for a particle with non-zero mass is given by this four vector here, which is the derivative of the momentum vector momentum 4 vector with respect to proper time tau. So in flat Minkowski space, the basis vectors are constant everywhere because it's flat space. They're constant everywhere and so we can find the components by using the scalar product of the dual basis vectors, the superscript mu dotted with, with the uh, time-based derivative of the um, momentum 4 vector. So here we are express the momentum 4 vector out in its, as a factor of its basis vectors. So we have the components here, and we have the covariant basis vectors here. And we dot that with the dual basis vectors, the contravariant ones here. We get this <coughs> scalar product of the basis vectors, which where the chronica delta applies here, and set mu equal to mu, we get dp mu d tau. So we've factored out the components only over here. Alright, so the situation we're going to have for this video is going to be some spaceship going past an observer in some frame s, his observer, and the spaceship is accelerating by due to the thrust in its engines. Alright, now here's the world line for an accelerating object. On a space-time diagram, obviously the y and z directions are suppressed. So we have time and x coordinate. Uh, <clears throat> the velocity vector forms a tangent to this curve here, to the world line. And notice these vectors the same magnitude here, because the scalar product of the four velocity, or velocity four vector, with itself, the scalar product gives us minus c squared, and that was shown in a previous video. So here's uh, x mu, these are the coordinates of the um, object going by on this world line, and it's all parameterized in terms of the proper time of the particle. So here's the position, the four position vector, so time, x, y, and z coordinates, all parameterized in terms of the proper time of the particle. The proper time is the time measured by a clock carried with the object as it makes its journey. Just have a little bit further look at this proper time. So we've got some world line here, and I've got two events on it, E1 and E2 on this world line, any two events. And we're going to find the length of that, and we're going to see how that's related to the proper time. Now let's just go back to Euclidean space and back to vector analysis there. And just remember with three vectors, position vector R, where the coordinates x, y, and z are all parameterized in terms of time. Take the derivative of that, then the norm of the vector. We'll use a dummy uh, integration variable u. We'll integrate from 0 to t to get the length of the curve. So the length of the curve is s as a function of time. The length of the curve is s. We can solve that. That's the norm of the first derivative of the position vector integrated into it 0 and t. And that gives us s of t. We can then invert that and solve to get t as a function of the arc length, or the length of the curve traveled by the particle. Now that's in vector analysis, in three-dimensional Euclidean space. But there's a parallel in special relativity in four-dimensional Minkowski space, because we have the um, ds squared, the, uh, an element of the length in the uh, Minkowski space, ds, the square of it, is c squared d tau squared, where tau is the proper time, so this is a differential form. So square root both sides, it implies this. And then uh, an interval of proper time is the integral d tau along this world line, which is the integral between event 1 and event 2 of the length of the curve ds, length of the segment in four space. Here it is. So just as in Euclidean vector analysis, three-dimensional space, time is a function of the arc length here, proper time function of the arc length here. Alright, so we move on. Alright, so the components of the four momentum vector as seen by an observer in S. So here are the components, here are the C, and then 
the three spatial components. Now the relationship between coordinate time and proper time tau is T is gamma times tau. The differentials of those are this, and then we can rearrange that to find these operators, the derivative operators here. Right. So the components of the four force as seen by the observer in S are the four vector for force, dp mu d tau, gamma times dp mu dt, I replace it from this relationship here, is gamma times d dt of the momentum four vector as seen by the observer in S. Expanding this out, we get ddt of each of the components, and we'll show shortly why this is the case. But from now on, where we see the arrow above a quantity, that means the three vector. That's the vector in three space and the x, y, z space, not the time component. So this is a three vector, not a four vector. This whole thing here is a four vector. You can see four components. This one, the time component, spatial component, another spatial component, and a third spatial component. So the whole thing is a four vector, but these little things here refer to three vectors in three dimensional space. So the three vector for force is this one here, the, the x direction component of force, the y direction component, the z direction component. Right. Now f zero component here in the four vector, this one here, gives the rate at which energy is transferred to the object of the spaceship as seen by the observer in S. So just going back to Newtonian mechanics, the work done by a system along some curve C is the force dotted with dr, the differential position vector, and that can be rewritten in terms of integral from some t1 time to another time t2, is f dr dt over dt. Expect us to scale the product of these two vectors, which is the velocity vector, here it is, f dot v dt. Now, taking the differential of both sides frees the integrand, but the rate of change of the work done is the rate of change of the energy with respect to time is f dot v, which is what we've claimed up here. Now in summary, the observer in S sees this four vector, and it's made up here. This is the zero component here, and then this three vector here obviously has three components. <coughs> so the four vector altogether has four components, and that's summarized in this form here. Now, the little arrows above indicate three vectors. So that's the normal force that we see in Newtonian mechanics from classical mechanics um, that we've all learned since, since high school. So by transferring to the rest frame of the object spaceship we have, so if we jumped inside the spaceship somehow and we're at rest with respect to the spaceship, then V is zero, gamma is one, and the four force becomes zero for the time component here and just becomes the usual three force of Newtonian mechanics. Now, a closer look at f dot v reveals the effect a force can have on the rest mass of an object. So f dot v is the time rate change of momentum dotted with v, d d tau, m zero v, dotted with v. Now, product rule here, Leibniz rule, expand that out, so we get d d tau of m zero, the rest mass, times v, plus m zero times dv d tau, dotted with v. Next line down, this derivative here, v dot v, which we'll see shortly what happens to that, plus this bit is here now. This is the acceleration dotted with v. Those two are right angles to each other, so that drops out, that goes to zero. Remember, we're still in flat space. These are right angles to each other. This gives us minus c squared dm0 d tau. Now, the velocity 4 vector dotted with itself, the scalar product of the velocity 4 vector itself, as we saw in a previous video, is equal to minus c squared for the particular metric we used. A force that preserves the rest mass of an object is called a pure force and must satisfy the condition f dot v is zero, because what this is expressing here is that the rest mass is changing with respect to the proper time. So, in the only way, uh, which is a bit of an unusual result, we're not familiar with that from Newtonian mechanics, but it is a factor in special relativity. A pure force is one that has the condition f dot v is zero so that this doesn't change. So anyway, just be aware of that. Alright, now the four acceleration of an object can be found from the derivative of the four velocity, so here we go, the acceleration of dd tau, and the four velocity, so here we are, here's the four velocity, as seen from a previous video. 
the DD tower of that, summarising it that way. Here's the three velocity up here, don't forget, with an arrow above. So it's gamma, this DD tower is replaced with gamma times DDT, the coordinate time, so going from proper time to coordinate time, or the derivative with respect to proper time. Down here we have the derivative with respect to coordinate time, this object in here. Let's expand it out, so we have gamma times C times to gamma DT, and then over here DDT of this object, well, Leibniz rule, or product rule, gives us to gamma DT, time, coordinate time-based derivative of the Lorentz factor times V, plus the Lorentz factor times the derivative of velocity with respect to time, again the three velocity in this case. Um, here we go, just looking at that again, we have these objects here, there we go, just tidying that up, that's the acceleration down there. There we go. So now the derivative of the Lorentz factor is d gamma dt, d dt of this object here. Okay, just remember that v squared is v dot v of the three vectors. And that's the velocity of the object passing by. Remember this. Uh, next line down, so decrease this by one. We come here, we have the minus a half down here times d dt of inside the um, brackets. Time based derivative of this. The two minuses here cancel out. Uh, t comes out here. The c squared factor comes out over here. We have this object here times now the product of Leibniz rule dv dt dot v plus v dot dv dt. Okay, um, that's just two of those, so we can summarise that as two times that object there. This two and this two will cancel out. We'll have the c squared one over c squared here times this object here. And this object here is really just although I've, I've not included that step, it's really just the cube of the gamma factor. So, or cube of the Lorentz factor, so it's gamma cubed. Now the components of the four acceleration vector, as recorded by the observer in the frame S, are given by this, which is this object here. All right. uh, so it's gamma times all of that, multiply through by half. There's factor C squared, C there, over C squared, it means we end up with C here. Uh, multiply through by gamma, and we have this subject here. So they're the components of the four acceleration, of the four vector that represents acceleration, or the acceleration four vector, if you like. Now, again, let's transfer to the rest frame of the spaceship, in which case V is zero, and now outside the spaceship, at rest with respect to the spaceship, gamma is 1, v is 0, the 4 acceleration becomes just the 4, the 3 acceleration, the 3 spatial acceleration. So on the spaceship we'll experience this acceleration, a1, a2, a3, in each of those directions, that's it. So in summary, the 4 vectors are, this is for acceleration, this object here, and this one here for force.